Hi there. I've been working on adding some end-to-end -end tests for PeerPad using Puppeteer. Uh, so I'm just going to show you where we've got to. Um, so the easiest way to do that is to run the tests. Uh, so Puppeteer is a fancy new way of firing up browsers programmatically. Um, it lets you use any testing framework you like. Uh, but here we can see that my test is firing up a Chromium, a new tab in Chromium, uh, and pointing it to my local dev server, localhost 3000. And there we see the PeerPad homepage open, and the robot is going to click the start button. And now the test is waiting for the uh, embedded IPFS instance to create its repo and find its initial peers. So the status in the top right corner is offline and the test is waiting for it to become online. When that happens, the test will consider that a successful initialization of a pad. So there we see the status is online and we can see in the console that the peer ID was logged out so we know things are working. So now in this second test, uh, it's a bit more interesting, um, it's going to start off the same way, load the home page and click the start button to create a new markdown pad. And again we have to wait for, so each browser instance uh, is completely isolated from the others so this is now waiting to initialize a new IPFS repository and again we're waiting for the status to become online uh, so this is just IPFS connecting to its initial peers and peerpad backend waiting to alert us that it's ready to start synchronizing pad changes with other peers so it's now online and we can see the robot is typing IR robot as the document title. In the log you can see it's logged out uh, the URL of the pad which is now passed to a second Chromium instance. So again this is completely isolated from the first one so we've now got two, two browsers running side by side. And we can see the first one has IR robot in the title. And the second one is still offline so it's IPFS instance is booting up and when it does then we should see we should see the uh, the magic of peerpad synchronizing the changes between the two tabs so it's online now and now the test is waiting to see the document title in the second instance become the same as the first one. And it's finally happened. And there we can see our tests are passed. So uh, it wasn't the fastest in the world, but as a smoke test to prove that everything is working as it should, um, I'm pretty happy with that. So how does it work? Well, uh, in the test code, the, the reason why I chose Puppeteer is uh, I've tried to do that sort of in-browser testing with things like Nightwatch and Selenium, and I've always struggled with the complexity. Like it's just been really difficult to get going. And the good news is with Puppeteer, this was, this was pretty simple. Um, so there's a bit of faffing around with mvars so that we can pass in any URL we want. So one fun thing with a smoke test like this is we can also point it to the live deployment and check that that's working as we expect. Um, and we can do things like pass a debug flag so that we can tell it to run not headless. So in, in the test we just saw, we saw the browsers dancing around but when you run it on CI, you don't need to run it, you can run it headless, and by default, uh, Puppeteer will run everything headlessly. So the tests are pretty simple. So because the second test creates more than one browser instance, we just 
make a function that lets us create a browser and that just calls puppeteer launch with some arguments and then we just stash a reference to that browser in an array uh, and then using jests after each hook uh, we just make sure that we close down all the browsers once all, all the tests have completed uh, so the first test uh, it just calls a create page function which doesn't do anything particularly fancy uh, create page uh, creates a browser as we saw above and then we ask the browser which this is all puppeteers API now browser for a new page uh, we have to do a hack that I won't go into um, but it returns a page instance so this is basically you can think of that as a tab uh, so then back in our test we this, the purpose of this test is to make sure that there are no errors when you go to the home page or initialize your first pad so this is running in a real browser so we listen for a bunch of different possible errors uh, page on error means that the page totally crashed um, on page error means that there was an unhandled exception in your javascript uh, on request failed means that a network request didn't work um, that is not foolproof so we also listen for responses that have a status code of greater than or equal to 400 so anything in the error range so that'll that'll trigger errors in our test say if um, images fail to load or any resource that we request doesn't doesn't turn up so then uh, I've tried to decompose the functionality into little helper functions so we've got a create new pad function and you pass in your puppeteer page instance and all that does is da -da 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 -da, is down here uh, so this is all puppeteer API stuff so first we ask the page to go to the app URL so this is either localhost 3000 or peerpad.net uh, and then we just await for the start button to be visible in the DOM uh, and this is just using standard uh, document query selector style CSS selectors um, so I've gone through the code base and added a bunch of helpful data attributes to things that I want to hook into in tests so rather than using CSS class is or IDs I'm using data attributes so that we can kind of identify that this attribute is for testing only rather than overlay it onto CSS issues um, so we wait for the start button to be visible in the DOM and then we click it and then we wait for uh, basically wait for the your IPFS status to be online uh, and we bump the time out up on that a little bit in case uh, IPFS takes a while to boot um, but ultimately it's going to return uh, your, your page ready on a new pad Doo -doo 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 -doo. so we've now created a new pad and we now wait for your peer ID and that again is another helper function that just calls a bunch of weights uh, for specific selectors so waiting for peer ID again is just waiting for the peer ID to be in the DOM and there's also a bit of extra magic here to extract your actual peer ID from the DOM and return it so that we can log it out just to get a sense that you have created a new IPFS repo that was mainly in there for my peace of mind when I was trying to verify that when I created two separate Chrome instances they didn't share any state from a previous run so that I could see that I was getting a brand new IPFS repo with a new peer ID um, so we've created a new pad so we've clicked around click, click the start button we've waited for the pad to come online here and we've got a peer ID that's very nice um, so we expect the peer ID to be truthy so we would fail the test if the peer ID hadn't had been null um, and also we expect it to have a length we could make that a stronger test we could make it make it sure it was a valid peer ID uh, but that doesn't seem necessary in the scope of this test um, 
And then at the end of this, we also assert that there were no errors. So these are like non-fatal errors that occurred in the console that we found whilst running this test. So it's very simple, but um, by running this, we know that the home page is rendered, and we know that the uh, you were able to create a new pad, and that there are no missing resources, and there are no JavaScript errors. Um, so it's a pretty useful smoke test. But then once I got one browser working, I thought, wow, it, wouldn't it be more exciting if we could test the real core function, which is can I synchronize a pad between two browser instances at once? And it turns out we're, with Puppeteer, it's pretty easy to do that. It's just the same same logic as testing with one. Um, so this test does that. Um, I've given in this version of the test, these are pay, this is a page, a Puppeteer page instance, which represents a tab in a browser. Uh, but I've given them usernames so that I can sort of tell the story of what I expect to see. So Alf's browser, uh, he creates a new pad and we wait for his peer ID, so we wait for him to come online. And we assert that he has a real peer ID, not just null. And then we ask Puppeteer to type into basically the document title, uh, just give it give it a new title of IR robot. Then we grab the URL for that page. So when you create a new pad, uh, you get given a URL with a unique uh, hash in it. So that is the unique pad URL. So what we're able to do then, this is the real fun bit, uh, we can then create a separate browser instance with a new tab and pass it the URL that's currently active in the first browser. Um, so this is, I mean, it's, it doesn't look like much in the code and that's kind of the fun part. Uh, but now we've got two Chrome instances that are going to start communicating over IPFS in the background. Um, so we do the same sort of check. We make sure that the second browser comes online and it's got a real peer ID. And then we do a bit of work to wait for the second browser's document title to match the first browser's document title. And the only way that that will be true uh, is if IPFS has done its job and PeerPad has done its job and it has synchronized the state of the pad from pad A to pad B. Um, and so this works by uh, we we pick out the document title input. So we've got a, a selector up here that we can use to find the input that lets you change the document title. And we just say Bob, the second browser, should wait for a situation where his document title matches, the value of his document title matches the value of else document title. Um, and that could take seconds, um, it could take minutes, but eventually those two pads will sync. And because we might run this in CI on quite low spec machines, uh, you can also bump up the timeout give it six minutes to kind of boot up two chromes and uh, check that everything is working. But that, I mean, so this is just uh, part of Jest. So you can see that there's very little extra code involved in orchestrating multiple browsers. And that is cool. Um, so I hope that you are excited about using Puppeteer, because I am. All right, thanks for listening.